Hello. In this video, we'll look at how to run a Next.js app on Google Kubernetes Engine and how to use GitHub Actions to make those deployments automatic. Now, if you're not aware of Next.js, we can summarize it as a React-based web development framework. It is extraordinarily popular with over 100,000 stars on GitHub. We won't be talking much about how to create a Next.js application, just how to productionalize it and run it on GKE. So again, we'll be using GitHub Actions for that. Now, we want to give you the full picture here. To productionalize your app on Google Kubernetes Engine, we're actually going to leverage Kubernetes-based approaches for provisioning cloud load balancers, and we'll also use the Kubernetes native ways to manage and maintain TLS certificates for a custom domain. These supporting resources, which again, will be able to provision through the Kubernetes system, will mean that users can access your Next.js application over the internet on a custom HTTPS web address. These additional networking features are optional in case you choose to follow along, but with a simpler use case like IP-based access. With what we're trying to achieve defined, let's go ahead and start to create some of these cloud resources and also our application code. I'm creating a Git repository here, and we'll be sure to share all the code in the description of the video. Now, to ensure that we have the required dependencies, we'll run node and npm version checks. And then we'll use an npx command to create a next app. I will call this demo app. Again, we won't be focusing too much on the application itself, as we're assuming you've already created the application and are just trying to deploy it to Google Kubernetes Engine. Now, if we go into the app, let's just check out what we created. And actually, in this development environment, we'll also specify a custom port to serve the application on. This is required because in our Cloud Shell IDE, we want to use the default web preview feature for applications running on port 8080. And here's our getting started, hello world type Next.js application. We'll be deploying this out step by step. So let's get a deployment target created here in Google Cloud. I'm going to go to Kubernetes Engine, and we're actually going to select a GKE autopilot cluster. The benefit with GKE Autopilot is that we don't have to set up node pool configurations and manage node pools for the cluster. Instead, we get a bit of an opinionated and more managed service, but can still use the standard Kubernetes resource and deployment mechanisms. We have a number of configuration points when setting up this Autopilot cluster, but actually, for our purposes, all the defaults will be fine. You'll probably at least want to change the name of the cluster to match your application, but we'll go ahead and continue along. Now, while this is provisioning, let's go ahead and start to think about how we're going to productionalize this next JS app. Now, typically when you set up CI CD pipelines, you'll first want to test the workflow locally with a Docker build and then a kubectl installation. That will validate that the setup meets your expectations, and then you can set that up in an automated way, which again, we'll use GitHub Actions for. So let's do exactly that. We'll create a Docker file here for containerizing our Next.js app. There's some nice documentation from Next.js on how to create a Docker image, as well as some example files in the open source Git repository. In the with Docker folder, we'll check out the Docker file that they have here and that they've given us as an example. We're going to copy the entire Docker file and then use it in our application here. So let's walk through what this is actually doing. So we've got a pretty lean Node.js base image where we're going to be installing dependencies. Then we have this builder image that we're going to be using to actually run our build. And finally, we've got this runner image that we're going to be using for actually running the application. Now, the reason for this three-stage Docker build is that we don't necessarily need things like build dependencies in our end application image, as that's going to be an additional image size that we don't want or need. 
The leaner we can keep this image, the better for both performance reasons as well as security reasons. So let's try out this Docker file exactly as they have here, and we'll give the image that we're going to build a name of test and a tag of latest. While that's building, we'll go ahead and check in on our autopilot cluster, which appears to still be provisioning. We're getting a next.js config error here, which we can quickly resolve by just updating this next config.js file. We can actually see in the GitHub repository itself an example configuration that does include this output standalone in the module exports. So we'll copy this and bring it into our configuration. With that updated, let's go ahead and give the build another try. The nice part about these Docker builds is that they'll leverage caches for each step in this Docker build process. So even though there were a lot of steps before, we can essentially skip those by leveraging the Docker image layers that we already have now locally in our IDE. And since our Docker image now built successfully, let's go ahead and give it a test by running that Docker image on port 8080 to again give ourselves a quick check with the web preview. Now we'll check the Docker file real quick to remind ourselves what port we're running on, which is 3000. So we'll need to do a port mapping here since the web preview feature of this cloud IDE runs on 8080. If we do a Docker PS, we can see that the Docker image is running, which is a good start. And then if we refresh our web preview here, great. We still have that application coming up just fine. And just to show that this is indeed working all right for us, we can stop the image, get an error on the web preview, and then start it again. Once more, we have our application running. So this is a great start. We've got our containerized application. Let's now look at how we actually deploy this out. For the productionalization, we'll need a Kubernetes resources file. This is going to contain all the specifications for our deployed demo application. So I'm going to paste in some YAML code here, and then we'll talk through the different pieces. This is going to include everything, including some TLS certificates for HTTPS, a custom domain, and some load balancing resources to put in front of our application to really give it a nice productionalization. So this managed certificate here is a GKE specific resource that just provides us with a TLS certificate for the domain that we provide with really no effort on our side. We're also going to enable a redirect from HTTP to HTTPS and use the GCE Ingress class, which is backed by Google Cloud Load Balancing, to enable Ingress to our application in a very scalable and performant way. We will need to, in just a moment, create a static IP for our load balancer to actually use. We'll do that in the Google Cloud Console. We'll also need to point our custom domain at that IP, but note that if you're just following along and don't need this additional production grade networking, you could just use an IP for this step and skip the domain as well as the certificate. For our backend, we're going to be routing to our demo service on port 80, which is actually going to do a port mapping to the 3000 port that we talked about earlier that's exposed in the Docker image. Finally, we have our demo deployment, which is going to be a managed abstraction around our running containerized app. We can have things like auto-scaling configurations for these deployments or run many replicas of our Next.js application, but in our case, we're keeping things simple. And I do want to note that we need to provide an image here for our application once we have that set up. So this is really looking very good. Let's start to set up a couple of resources that we need in the Google Cloud Console, and we can confidently move along since this autopilot cluster was created. Note that again, since we're not managing node pools and this is a more serverless experience from Google Cloud, we actually don't have any nodes running at the moment. We'll start to get provisioned infrastructure underneath this cluster when we actually start deploying resources like our Next.js app. The next thing that would probably make sense is to create our artifact registry repository for the application's Docker images. Now you could use things like Docker Hub, for example, but there are some nice features in Google Cloud with this artifact registry service. It will give you a private place to put your images without any licensing or subscription costs. When we create the repository, we'll give it a name, make sure to select Docker, and then select a region. We do tend to recommend the regional location type as opposed to multi-region, just for cost reasons. And then we'll create the registry. 
Once we've created the registry, if we view the setup instructions, this command will help us configure our local Docker CLI to use this artifact registry. So instead of rebuilding, let's go ahead and take our test latest image and give it a new name that matches the artifact registry path here. For example, we can call this app and give it the tag of latest. And then since I didn't put it in earlier, let's go ahead and grab that configuration command one more time, and then we'll configure our IDE here to use that registry. Now, note that if you're using an IDE that's not on Google Cloud, you may have to run a G Cloud in it or activate a service account to be able to run these commands without any additional authentication work. But since we're using a Cloud IDE here, all that authorization and authentication is taken care of for us. With that done, let's go ahead and push our image and we'll test it out in our Kubernetes cluster. Going back to the console, we'll just sanity check that the image is now showing up by refreshing our interface, and now we've got that here. You'll also see with these repositories that things like security scanning are often mentioned in these interfaces, and you can turn on vulnerability scanning. We do want to advise that you check out the pricing for this service, though, as this is not something free to turn on, and the pricing might be a little bit higher than you would otherwise expect. So keep that in mind if you're using Artifact Registry for your Docker images. Without that scanning, it's going to be a low-cost service. And now that we've got our image, let's go ahead and hard code, just for now, our image and tag in our deployment here so we can test out our resources and then we'll set up the CI-CD configuration on top of this. Now, before we apply this resource again, we need to do two things on the networking side. First, we need a static IP, and then we need to create a DNS A record for our domain. Those things are both pretty quick. Just make sure that the name matches exactly across the Cloud Console IP creation interface and your Kubernetes annotation. We do need the global IP type and make sure that it's IPv4. Once the IP address has been allocated to you, grab that IP address and then use it for an A record in your DNS provider for your domain. And again, if you don't have a domain, you could just delete this managed certificate resource and just use the IP. Just keep in mind, you may need to use self-signed certificate or otherwise adjust a couple of these parameters so that you're not, for example, redirecting to HTTPS. But in any case, on a different screen, we'll go ahead and put that DNS record in our DNS provider of choice, which does not need to be Google Cloud if you're using something else. Once that DNS record has been created, let's go ahead and deploy our Kubernetes resource here with a kubectl command. This gcloud container clusters get credentials command creates a kubectl configuration for authenticating with the cluster that we created. And then we can use that resources file to create the required Kubernetes resources on that cluster. Let's go ahead and watch the pod create for our application. And that can take a couple of minutes since this is a new cluster and doesn't yet have any computing resources applied to it. Google will, on our behalf, provision the required compute resources under the hood. We can also start to look at the networking resources through both kubectl commands or even the Google Cloud Console. And again, since we use that GCE ingress class that's going to be backed by Google Cloud load balancing, we see that load balancer here. You can even click in to see some of the details. In just a moment, we'll have a front-end configuration which includes our managed certificate. If we go into the certificate, we'll see the provisioning take place for our custom domain. Know that this could take at least a few minutes up to maybe 15 or 20. Sometimes it can take up to a full day, even though we tend to see much less in practice. And now our certificate is showing as active. It can still take a couple of minutes for the certificate to propagate, but we should be live with our application here very soon. And there's our application running on our custom domain with HTTPS encryption. As a last bonus step, we'll quickly set up CI/CD for this Next.js app using GitHub Actions. We created a little bit of unnecessary hierarchy for this app, so let's go ahead and remove that. 
So now we've got our application at the root level of our repository, and we can go ahead and create a new GitHub repo for this code before setting up GitHub Actions. I'll need to initialize the Git repo, then push it to the new remote GitHub repository. It looks like the Next.js app creation actually already set up Git for us, so we don't need to do an initial commit. We just need to add our resources file for Kubernetes, our Docker file, and our updated config. Now, before we add that, we do want to change one thing in the Kubernetes configuration here around the project. Ideally, we don't want to expose our project ID in a GitHub repository, especially if it's public. So we're going to replace this with the placeholder of Google Project. The rest here, though, doesn't contain any sensitive information, unless you think that the domain here is sensitive, in which case you may need to protect that as well. But I think we're looking pretty good. Just sanity checking the commit here, we're adding our Docker file, updated configuration for Next.js, and our Kubernetes resources. This all looks good, and there's nothing particularly sensitive. We can now add that remote GitHub repository and push our code. In the repo now, we've got our code nicely showing up. For the GitHub Workflows CI CD, we'll need a workflows directory inside a GitHub directory, and from there, we'll create our deployment configuration. Again, I'll paste in some code here, and then we'll talk through it. In this GitHub workflow, we're going to both build and deploy our Docker application. It's convenient to have these steps with the same workflow due to their dependency. You need to build before you deploy. We're naming our deployment and running it on any commits made to the main branch. This can be altered to align with version tags or a special release branch. In the code, we'll set up the Google Cloud authentication, which requires certain secrets that we'll discuss shortly. We'll also build our Docker image and push it. While you might want to employ a more sophisticated versioning or image tag strategy, in this instance, we're using the latest image tag for simplicity. Importantly, we'll be carrying out Google Project Placeholder resolution with our Kubernetes resources file. This means we're setting up authentication, building and pushing the image, and then deploying to our GKE cluster. Next, let's set up the two secrets in GitHub Actions. These require a service account in Google Cloud. If you navigate to IAM and Admin, and then Service Accounts, we'll create a service account named GitHub Actions CD. We'll then assign it the necessary permissions to carry out the build and deploy work. For instance, we might provide Kubernetes Engine Developer access and Artifact Registry Writer access. After creating the service account, we need to generate a JSON key for the GitHub Action Secret for authentication. We can introduce this into our IDE, but avoid committing these key files as they provide access to your Google Cloud project. In the key file, we find the service account authentication, and we'll save this key as our Google application credentials in GitHub Actions. We'll also need one more secret for the Google project. Now, we're ready to commit this new workflow and run it, making sure not to commit the JSON key. Let's monitor our GitHub Actions workflow to check if the build and deploy steps were successful. Great, we've had a completed and successful build as well as deployment in our GitHub Actions workflow. Since we didn't alter the image or the Kubernetes resources, we'll still have the same application. But as we continue to work on this application, all we need to do is commit to the main branch and push it. Then, GitHub Actions will detect this change and automatically deploy to GKE Autopilot. Our certificate will be entirely managed by Google, including renewals and all the underlying infrastructure for this GKE Autopilot cluster will be handled by Google as well. 
With this architecture, there's virtually nothing else you need to do to keep this application running at production grade performance. We hope that this pattern proves useful in your work. Feel free to leave any questions in the comment section. Thank you for watching and please enjoy responsibly. Thank you.